Hey y'all, it's LaTrice. I pray you are having a wonderful day. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It is Mindset Monday. I apologize that I'm a little late um, balancing these kids and all the things, right? So I just wanted to log on and I wanted to encourage you. I just want to encourage you in the word of the Lord. I pray, as I said, that you are having a wonderful day. I have just a, a short message of encouragement. Um, Mindset Monday, as you already know, I'm going to just intro it a little bit, is uh, something dear to me. It is simply a message of encouragement. It is founded on let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, because the reality um, as business owners, as wives, moms, dads, whatever you are in life, it's going to take the right mindset to pioneer forward, right? And so I firmly believe that it's the mind of Christ. And so I am really serious, really serious about getting fit, getting focused, intentional, and tenacious. God, first, go second. Um, that's not a mantra. That's not a business tag. That's my life. I believe that when you follow and you hear, listen, and obey the voice of God, listen, you're going to find yourself walking a uh, purposefully um, living in Christ, okay? So that's what my and Monday is all about. It's my opportunity to encourage you in the word of the Lord. I firmly believe no matter where you are in life, if it's corporate, um, uh, maybe you're leading a team. Um, maybe you're married uh, in the valley of decisions. It, it doesn't matter. God's word can navigate you. Listen, God's word can navigate you. So I want to um, just jump into today's encouragement. And um, God, I feel like I have two titles in my mind. So I'm going to I'm going to let the Holy Spirit uh, tie it together. The first part, when doubt sets in, okay? When doubt sets in. But then I want to say, sound the alarm. And I'm going to switch it. Sound the alarm when doubt sets in. I, I have my notes, y'all, but I'm always giving Holy Spirit way to do what he wants to do. Um, so I want to jump right in. Um, and it's our scripture, our core scripture for today is coming a couple of places. But our core is Romans 8. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. I want to start this Mindset Monday off with a quote. Um, and this quote says, use doubt as an opportunity for God to show you how big he really is. Now, sound the alarm. Before I go into my points, I want to just say, what do I mean when I say sound the alarm? At the beginning of Mindset Monday this year, I said that we are going to have to consistently ask God to open our eyes, open my eyes so that I may see your protection, your provision. Sometimes we can't see, but even in, and I even mentioned just spiritually, you can be reading the same scripture, but all of a sudden see something that you didn't see before. Whenever I am studying God's word, I don't take it lightly. I always start out my studying by saying, Lord, open my eyes so that I may see what you want me to see today. I don't care that it's Proverbs 3 and I've read it 20 times, but God can give you fresh revelation, right? But what I want to encourage you today is we want to say that all through the year, all throughout the week, all throughout our day. Help me see when life is taking a turn, when obstacles and setbacks come up, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself, Lord, help me to see in the moment what I need to see. So when I'm saying sound the alarm, I guess colon or semicolon, when doubt sets in, I want you to see that as an alarm. Now, um, the quote, like I said, says use doubt as an opportunity for God to show you how big he really is. Here's what I want to say. Um, I want to start out with what do I mean by sound the alarm? And let's think naturally speaking. We've all been driving, right? And you hear the alarm. Now, if you are in your house and the alarm goes off, either one or two things happen. Somebody is trying to break in or maybe you triggered it. I've had all of a sudden where I'm in my room and I hear the alarm and I know either my kids are trying to get out the door and they forgot that the alarm was on. Maybe my husband's coming in, forgot to deactivate, or maybe we got a whole situation, right? So that alarm tells me several things. We've been driving and we hear 
um, the ambulance is telling you to do what? Move. You know, so my point is when we hear the alarm, different sounds, alarms, ambulance, um, police, it's either you normally all of us, we like, oh, he, I hope you're not coming after me. Right. It tells you to do something. The, the alarm tells you to do something. It's a signal. Okay. Hear me. So when I say sound the alarm, we react, we respond. We don't see the, the ambulance and go, oh, okay, and keep driving. They're going to run you off the road. They mean move, right? If you see the police, you want to get out the way or you hoping they're not trying to move you over, right? If it's your home alarm, you got to get up and deactivate it. So my point is the alarm signals something. I want doubt to be an alarm in your belly that you own to bigger. Hear me. When that doubt sets in, I want that to be like, oh, that's an alarm. Okay. I want that to be an alarm. So Romans eight, as I mentioned, is our foundation for this. And what am I talking about? Doubt. Today I'm talking about doubt because I mentioned last week or the week before we've been praying. Some of you have been fasting. You've been setting before God. You said, I want clarity. But the reality is it's going to take courage to go where he's going. And we already know that the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. But for many of us, as I said the other week, it's going to be through. He's a thief. He's coming to rob. He's coming to steal your joy. He's coming to attack. He's one and his first his biggest thing is deception, doubt. He's still today saying, did he really say, do you really think you can write the book? Did he say you should stay in that marriage? Did he say that he's always um, challenging the word of the Lord? Okay. So I want us to sound the alarm within. And I'm going to tell you what that means. So number one, when that doubt sets in, that ought to be a rumbling. No, I'm, I'm on to something bigger. I'm on to something bigger. Okay. So doubt is defined as a feeling of uncertainty, fear, lack of confidence to call into question the truth of something. Hear that to call in the question, the truth of something. I am talking today about sounding the alarm. I want you, the Bible talks about we must be wise, alert. Okay, we got to be wise at the enemy's tactics. So I'm today encouraging you on one of them, doubt. The same way that you hear the police siren, you react. You hear the ambulance sound, you react. Your home alarm, you react. All of these require action. When doubt sets in, I want you to react. I want you to say, oh, I must be on the right path because if I'm starting to doubt, I'm on to something bigger, okay? Hear me, because what he's trying to do is just what the definition in and of itself said. He is trying to call into question the truth of something, the truth of who God called you are, the truth that he has equipped you to do whatever that is. So I want doubt to be an alarm that no, I'm going to trust God. Oh, thank you that I'm feeling this way. Thank you that my stomach hurt right now. I must be on the right path to purpose. I want that to be an alarm. So when doubt comes in, like I said, when we hear the alarms, what do we do? When we hear the signal of the police, what do we do? We either get out of the way or we hope they ain't pulling us over. If it's the ambulance, you move, you wait to the side. If it's your alarm. In other words, why am I keep repeating that? Action is required. When there is an alarm, you must move, right? It's telling you to do something. If the alarm goes off at your job, you know, oh Lord, they doing one of those, uh, unless they come on and say, this was just... You know, um, I forgot the word, but you know what I mean? To sometimes say, oh, this is just a test, but otherwise you're grabbing your purse and moving, right? It requires action. Hear me. When doubt sets in, we're not going to sit and contemplate on the lies of the enemy. That's not the action we're going to do. Here's number one. What you're going to do? You're going to dive into God's word. You're going to begin to say, oh, that's what you said. Know that the enemy is going to always do what? He distracts. He diverts. He deceives. And listen, he wants to make you doubt God's word. So what do you do? The opposite. You dive right on into his word. Who did God say I am? And you go to Genesis and start with good. Look, when he finished, what did he say is good? And when you break down good, it means complete. So it does not matter how you feel about yourself. What did God say? Okay. So when doubt sets in, we're going to dive into God's word. Why? Because the truth of God's word stabilizes us. Listen, your feelings are a false reality to what's going on. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by the word of God. The word of God must 
be the governing factor of your life, okay? What he says is what I have to do. So I'm encouraging you because listen, you fasted this year. You did the 21 days. You got the notes. Now what? It's going to take courage to walk that out. And if you think the enemy is like, oh, I'm so glad you sat in the Lord's presence and he told you that you're going to run the 500, the Fortune 500 company. You're going to write the curriculum. You're going to stay in the marriage even though you're hurt and you're going to do, oh, great. Let me just help you do this. No, your time is not going to make itself available for you to get in God's word. No, the enemy is not fixing a pullback because you had 21 days in the presence of the Lord. He is going to begin to doubt. But we, just like that alarm is set within you, we have to begin to engage him. We cannot be of those that draw back. No, I'm going to draw forward and I'm going to insert the word of God, the truth of the word in this matter, not my feelings, but what did God says. So when that alarm sets out, we must dive into God. God's word because the truth of God's word stabilizes us. Pray and be honest with God, but get in your word. I am, I, I love it. I just shared this with my husband. I said, if there's one thing that I appreciate about my mother, yes, she taught me prayer. Yes, she taught me fasting. Her and my, my parents put the word of God in me. But one thing my mom used to tell me all the time is be honest with God. To the point, I told y'all this last night and he bust out laughing. I said, I remember when she was teaching me to pray and during this season, it was praying about my mate. My mom would teach me about praying about your mate before they even come. And I remember her saying, she gave me a little journal and she said, I want you to write your list out to the Lord. And I remember she was teaching me. She said, do you, do you want a man with muscles? And I was like, mama, she was like, well, do you? I was like, yes, ma'am. She was like, all right, make sure you put that on there. I was like, oh my God. But she, in other words, she was saying, be honest. Why are you going to sit up here and ask for something? That ain't what you want. Tell him what you want. Now he know what you need, but tell him what you want and then trust what he gives, right? And so she taught me how to pray honestly, but yet say, God, I know my thoughts are not your thoughts. There's things about me that I don't know that you know. So I trust your will, your way. So why am I saying that? Because as we dive into God's word, where he's taking us, we don't have to, the reality is some up. Yeah, it's, you're going to be doing it scared. It's going to make you nauseous. Lord, who? You like, who? You're going to look at the paper and go, what? But you get to be honest with him. And you get to say, oh, God. But as you get on the floor, we also got to get in the word and know that he didn't call us. He's already equipped us. OK, remember Psalms 139 and 16. He said all your days were known before you live. He has already built you with what you need. But as you get into his presence, he will activate. So what am I talking about? Sound the alarm within you. When that doubt begins, oh, that's an alarm. I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. Because if the enemy is challenging you, you better know you must be, you, you doing something. He ain't bothering nobody that ain't doing nothing, okay? So we are going to dive into God's word and find out what he says. Why? Because God's word must be authoritative. It must govern our life. It must be the foundation, period. You ain't going to tell me, listen, I do something with my kids. I'm developing something and writing a curriculum for something. And so I test it out on them. And part of it is called Why the Bible. I'll just come out, Why the Bible? They'll say, uh-oh, they're going to earring. They'll say, because it's the most powerful thing ever, period. I make them say, period. Like they got the jerk with it. Miles think that's so quick. I say, Why the Bible? They got to tell me Why the Bible? Because I want them to understand this book trumps anything else. I don't care what your journal say. I don't care what everybody say. Oh, you can read this Bible study. If you never read nothing else but the Bible, that's enough. Now, I'm not saying, because I love to read, that there's not other good books to read, but we have, we can't make sure that we're not replacing our source, our truth. Do you have to start there? That has to be your solid foundation. Know who God is. Know what God says so that when that doubt comes in, you can walk in the authority of who God has called you to be, okay? So, we must know, number two, when doubt, that God really does have a plan, for our life and it's good. I know we hear Jeremiah 29, 11 and everybody can quote it, but do you believe it? This is, I'm, I'm really encouraging you that when doubt sets in, let that be an alarm ringing in you to say, no, nah, uh -uh, I'm not going to fear. Instead, I'm going forward. I'm going to do it scared. I'm going to, that's what courage is. Courage is the strength to walk in the midst. It may, the, the situation may not change. 
but I'm going to have the courage to obey in spite of how I feel, in spite of what the situation is saying, in spite of what the doctor is saying. It's going to, it's a yet praise. It's a yet faith. Okay. So listen, we must know that God really does have a plan for our life. So when doubt sets in, that's why our scripture, listen, Romans 8 and 28, hear me. And we know you must know some things. Those that know their God will be strong and do exploits. We love to say, oh yeah, I'm going to do, but do you know him? And that's why I said it's so important that we say, open up my eyes, God, so that I may see in the moment. Yes, I'm in a crisis. Open up my eyes, God. I don't want to lean to my own understanding, my insight, but I need you, oh God, to show me in this minute, what am I to do? Stop. Don't be so quick to move. No, I'm going to sit here. I don't care if somebody handing you a million dollars. Everybody million dollars ain't the million dollars you want. Stop, sit and see. Don't be so quick to get into that contract. Thank you, 24 hours, right? Okay, I'll get back with you in 48. And they be like, well, I'm trying to get them money. Don't be quick. Oh, I'm going to sign that right now. They might be locking you into something for five years. Stop for a minute and say, God, open up my eyes. Even in the good and the bad, y'all, we must seek him. There is safety and wisdom, okay? So I want to sound the alarm today through this message to let you know that when doubt comes in, no, we ain't going to be, that's natural. Just like people talk against fear. Fear is natural. What you can't do is live there. That's what the Lord, he ain't tell you to live in fear. He ain't give you a spirit of fear. But it's a natural motion. If somebody jumped behind the thing, you can't be like, hallelujah. I mean, nah, you scared me. It's all right. You ain't going to hell. It's a natural bullshit. But we can't live there. That should not be our posture. So what I want you to do is recognize that when that doubt comes in, where is it coming from? No, nah, I'm pioneering forward. Oh, I'm on to something. Oh, okay. This, this is it right here. Let that be alarmed that I'm going to trust them. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to dive in this word and I'm going to begin to say, because you're trying to challenge where God, what God has said about me. And I'm going to insert the truth of God's word. Okay. So we must know that he really is working everything for good for those who are called according to his purpose. His will, his way. Okay, let's his will, his way. And I love that scripture, but it says for those who love him. And the Bible says that when we love God, we obey him. Hear that? Because everybody love him. Everybody ain't obeying him. He said, but when you really love me, you obey me. Just like our kids. What do we tell them? But mom, I didn't. Okay, well, you say that, but then you would have done this, right? We expect action to align with their words. So does God. And so God says, I'm going to, I'm working this when you're loving me. You got to obey me. I, yes, I can, but we can't just operate in disobedience and then be like, but he got that. He going to weave that into perfection. No, you're going to go through some hard times because you got to obey. You got to love him enough to do what he's telling you to do to obey his word. Okay. Because God really does have it all in control. So in our doubts, in our fears, in our heartbreak, we must trust God. He has a purpose in the pain, okay? But remember what I said. John 10 and 10 reminds us that the enemy has a purpose. And it's to steal, it's to rob us, to rob us of our peace, rob us of our joy. Like some of us as believers, I'm talking, he know, I'm just saying, you ain't going to jump in such and such bed. You ain't going to smoke a blunt tomorrow. That ain't going to be your test. But can he doubt? Can he distract you with the good things? You doing all the things in the day that the Lord ain't tell you to do. He says, sit down and write the book. You teaching, you volunteering, you at the shelf. Okay. And the enemy like, yes, with all the good, but it's still a distraction. We must, y'all, Focus, get fit, focus, be intentional and tenacious to sit at the feet of God, not just to talk, but to listen and then get up and walk courageously out what he told us to do. And yes, it's going to be scary. I'm living that right now. Yes, it's going to be scary, but you have to know that he has already equipped you. Okay. Now, last thing as I, um, been talking about sounding the alarm. This is the last thing I want to leave with, leave with you. When doubt 
sets in. This is what I'm talking about today. Doubt. When doubt sets in, I want that to be alarmed. Literally, like you hear them police, doo -doo -doo, when your stomach start hurting, and I'm dead serious, hear me, this happens to me. When my stomach hurt, I know one or two things happening. I'm right where I'm supposed to be, or something is about to go, like I have a discernment to know. And I begin in those moments to pray and give praise and shift the atmosphere, because God did not give me a spirit of fear. I don't have to worry like that. And I'm going to leave you with a scripture regarding that. But here is number two. Doubt should be an alarm to step wider, believe bigger, go harder. Hear me. When you feel that turning and, and you know you and all of a sudden doubt setting there. Oh, go big. Step wider. Go on and stretch that faith. Listen, believe bigger. And go ahead and go harder. Get in the word. Just start praising them and quoting the word and doing the thing that God told you to do. Because we're going to obey in the process. Okay? Listen. Why? Because the enemy is going to continue to challenge. And how do you combat that? You got to say it is written. You must combat him through the word of God. Okay? So praise and worship is a whole weapon. Encourage yourself by reflecting and meditating on the things that God has already done. Make it a habit to operate in gratitude. What has he said? God has been faithful up to this point. Recall. Hit that recall in the moment of doubt. You can't do that. They're not going to give you that position. Then you apply and got denied. But this season is a yes. This time is a yes. Don't let him defeat. No, step wider and begin to recall the God of your salvation who has been faithful through the years and yet will be faithful today. Okay. You have to open up your mouth and say what God says. And then I love Ezra. Ezra 7 and 10. This is what it said. For Ezra had prepared in his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach it in Israel, to teach Israel's statutes and judgments. He prepared. Okay. Doubt setting in. Prep go harder. What do I mean by go harder? Prepare. What did the Lord tell you to do? Start the PowerPoint. Start the research. Seek God's word. Put a scripture up. Meditate on it. That's what I mean. Go harder. Insert the truth of God's word in the lie that the enemy is trying to use against you. We have to be fight, y'all. But we don't fight in the carnal. No, we fight in the spirit. Okay? So as I end today, I just want to encourage you. Let your doubt be a stepping stone. An opportunity for God to show you just how great he is. Listen, God is great. Um, I want to encourage you. You got to be courageous. This year is a year of courage. I keep saying that. And, and may, I know that's a word for me. But we're going to have to be courageous to step in the lanes that God is telling us to do, which is why Mindset Monday is so important. I don't get on here just to do that. It takes the mind of Christ to do what he's calling us to do. Like, Lord, give me your attitude. Lord, give me your mindset. Lord, renew my mind in the word of God so that I can see myself, so that I can see the assignment through your eyes. God, I don't want to just go about this as a contract. No, God, but I know the contract is nothing more than a vehicle to drive up to something else because there's soul at stake because everything God does is about others. It's never about you living lavishly and leveling up. There's souls at stake. So God opened my eyes that I don't even come about this assignment in such a nonchalant way that I forget to look through eternity. Okay, y'all like for real. We got to remember like God is, he has a purpose in everything and it's about others. So even if your assignment has come about you, maybe you doubting it and you overwhelmed it and you, cause you try, it's you, take you out. It ain't about me. Lord, what do I need to see in this moment? Okay. So I want to encourage you. Do not be dismayed. Do not be alarmed. Do not be disturbed. Do not be, um, don't let there be sudden disappointment. No, when things happen, hear me, alarm. There's an action that's required. Listen, I'm so hot. I'm like, did I not turn the air on? I'm about to sweat to death. But anyway, um, as, as, as you, as the alarm goes off, what happens? You all of a sudden observe. If you're driving, you stop, right? You're like, okay, what do I need to do? You're 
Listen, that's what I want doubt to be. That's what I want fear to be. That's what I, let it be an alarm within you to say, oh no, I'm, I'm going forth in the word of God. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's something. Okay, we're going to do this courageously. I'm actually fixing to get me a scripture right now. Go ahead and shift the atmosphere. Put you on some music. Listen, come on. We got to let these things not stagnate and stop us, but courage continues to go in the midst. Know that doubt is a whole strategy of the enemy. Is a strategy. Like I said, he is the, look, the author of the deeds that go with his name, the devil. Discouragement, delays, um, distractions, all the stuff, y'all, and doubt. So today, let your doubt be a stepping stone, an opportunity for God to show you just how great he is. Just how great he is. He is faithful, y'all. His promises can be trusted. He really is. But you will not be able to courageously go forth. Like I said last week, it sounds great to say, oh, okay, um, I'm walking by faith. But if you don't have that trust relationship established, you won't move. You won't move. Okay, you fasted. He done showed you. CEO, New York Times best author. Now what? You got to move. And doubt is going to come. Expect the enemy to challenge you. Expect the no, but yet praise him and stir up something in you and say, I'm going to go harder. Let me get the PowerPoint because they going to call me. PowerPoint going to be ready. Matter of fact, let me get the research. Hold on. Let me go ahead and draft up my invoice. Come on, move by faith. So that's all I had today. I pray something I said encouraged you all. Sound the alarm. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying sound the alarm, but I really want you to be aware. I want those things within you to be an alarm to say, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to dig dive. I'm going to deep dive in his word. I'm going to praise him even harder and I'm going to move. I'm going to think bigger and I'm going to step out and watch what God will do. All right. That's all I have. See you next week. Bye.